bar? Yeah, yeah. 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 I think you're going to be disappointed in what's about to happen, I'm going to be honest. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think there must be a misprint in your schedule, because I don't think you have gathered in here for this person if who you think is going to be honest with you. doesn't make any sense. Yeah, he's got a full house. Just two yeah. Oh well, listen, you're screw up. Whatever. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Misha Collins. Um, 
Yeah, we have this uh, this new app for Gish, and which has been which has been renamed by just cutting it in half. It used to be Gishwiz, and now it's just Gish. Um, but the app shows you where all the other people on the app are, sort of, because the app sort of doesn't work too. And, uh, and it's kind of amazing. Like I opened up the app in Bellingham, Washington, and I was like, oh my god. There's a lot of creepy weirdos in my area <laughs> that I didn't know about. Um, so that's fun. It's fun to play with. It's really like cumbersome. You have to chat by, by country, um, which is basically an impossible way to communicate. Um, and we have a fix for it. And I was like, don't fix it. <laughs> it's, it don't fix it yet. It's, uh, it's so fun that it's so annoying. Um, <laughs> So, that's a little um, insight into my brain. Um, mm -hmm. yep. To tell you about uh, my children, and I miss, that was boring. Um, I, um, yeah, we'll get into that. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna let you guys ask me questions. Do you have one? I see that you're standing in the microphone. Just like my friends. <laughs> Without spoiling anything, Star Lord and Thor have a voice off between Castiel, Dean, Thor, and Star Lord. Wait, wait. So I haven't seen it. So you're gonna, without so, spoiling it, do they do they try to out Star one Lord another? feels emasculated. Uh huh. Basically, when Thor comes on board because he's got a very big okay. Voice. So it's sort of like Dean when Castiel came on board. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so between Castiel, Dean. Thor and Star Lord, who do you think would have been in the voice off? Well, so I don't know uh, Star Lord or Thor's voices, so it's hard for me to really weigh in with authority, but I would say Castiel. <laughs> <laughs> um, I definitely noticed that when I came on the show, all of a sudden Jensen's voice dropped a bit when he was playing me. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think if you watch uh, episodes of Supernatural, you'll see that the scenes that Castiel and Dean are in together, both voices drop a little bit because we're like getting competitive with each other. Um, Dean's voice is definitely squeakier. Uh, just saying. And by the way, I think I think Jared's getting in on it a little bit too. I've noticed that he started to drop his voice too. <laughs> So, it's either that or we've all hit puberty. <laughs> Which may be the case. And then there was Mark Shepard, of course, who, you know, he really threw a monkey wrench into the works. His, his voice is maddeningly deep, and it's very hard to go below that. Um, I've attempted to tell you something that I don't think I've ever shared before. Okay, so when I, when I do the cast voice, Sometimes I go lower than my voice actually goes, and it causes this weird sort of like clicking, rattling sound, like a viper or something, and it's, it's coming from my throat. And the the sound mixer on our show, this was like season five. He's like, I don't know what to do. Like we're getting this weird interference, and so we bought new microphones, and it was still happening. And so he repatched his board, and it was still happening. And then he's like. Fuck, it's just coming from your voice, Misha. You're doing weird shit. And so they, they, they in post sometimes, when my viper sound comes out, they have to go in and like paint out in the, in the sound files these little clips that come from my voice because it's unnatural what I'm doing for me. My natural voice, as you can hear, is quite squeaky. So when I do that, you ask for it. I'm just rambling. All right, I'll move on to that question. Yes. I really wanted to go to America, and I'm finally going to go this summer, and I'm just wondering if you could tell me where I should go. Where's the best place to go? You're going to go to the States, and you don't have an itinerary plan? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm flying into New York. Flying into New York? To, um, well, That's a quaint, it's a quaint town. <laughs> um, I would recommend you spend the entire time in South Dakota. South Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Detroit. Um, where, 
Let's see, one in New York. Where else? DC. I, think, I, want, I want to see the Washington Monument. You want to see if you can get Trump's signature or something? <laughs> <laughs> I want it there to a place. Trump is super popular over here, right? <laughs> no. Where they filmed Avengers because I'm a huge fan of it. Oh, okay. So, I'm going to go to the monument. You guys realize there's not enough Avengers? <laughs> 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 Are they like, they're false advertising or something? Come and see the Avengers! <laughs> <laughs> They're not the best. They're just, it's a big thing here, so a lot of us like it. Okay. We have a lot of us like you as well. Don't throw me your scraps of comments. <laughs> So, I had to think of a question on the spot, right? Uh, so you had to think of a question on the spot? Weren't you lining up for like 20 minutes over here? My name came up on the board. Oh, I see. And, uh, yeah. and you didn't really have a question, so uh, now you're panicking. Uh, you're starting to talk about Avengers like the other woman did. Yes. <laughs> Is that what happens? Like, Brits when they're nervous talk yeah. about Avengers? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anything going to do in New York? Um, you want tips for what to do in New York? Uh, the British Quarter in New York is. Never mind, doesn't exist. Um, I uh, no, no, I have no tips for you. Okay. Uh, DC is great. I think you're gonna love it. Not the White but, House. Um, go to the White House. Go to the White House. Yeah. And. Uh, and just <laughs> scowl at it. Okay. I can do that. Every once in a while, that, the White House is, you know, very well fortified. There's secret service all around it, and all kinds of cameras, and secret tunnels. I, I interned at the White House, uh, for Bill Clinton many, many years ago. And, you know, it is really, a, it's a bunker in a lot of respects. Um, but every once in a while, somebody, like, tries to you know, attack the president in the White House. And they, and they do remarkably well. Like, they make it all the way up the front steps. Or, you know, they land a plane right in the backyard. So it's like, it has this security, but people seem to get through it all the time and, like, shoot the White House and stuff like that. Um, so you want me to do that, yeah? I'm not, not going to go on the record asking you to shoot the White House. But if you end up making that choice while you're visiting, that's your business. Now I'm worried that I'm going to be back in the States. Oh, do not, at least do not shoot at our president or his house. We're just going to say that on the right, unless you used to. Okay. Um, you're welcome for that, those hot tips on travel. Hi, Michelle. Hi there. <clears throat> Um, I'm quite a fan of the human sex arts <laughs> and <laughs> They thought you were going to say you were a fan of the Avengers. <laughs> yeah, you missed an opportunity. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be hated by the whole place. I've never seen one Avengers oh, movie. Get out of our convention! <laughs> And you're going to hate me even more because I'm French and my French president is now your president's new best friend. Yeah, that, yeah but he's really, she's just winking and nodding. He's, I, I don't think, I don't think anyone thinks that uh, they're really friends. No, 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 no. <laughs> Except for Trump. <laughs> Trump believes it, but I, nobody else does. I think that was the plan. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, human guess. <laughs> Um, I really enjoyed the arc of Human Cast, and I think it was quite heartbreaking and beautiful at once. Do you think that if Cast was to become human now and stay in the bunker with Sam and Dean instead of being thrown in the wild, how would that go and would that be different for him? How would it go, how would it go for Cass if he was Sam and Dean's housewife in the bunker? <laughs> I don't really know where to go with this. I, um, I do think that if Cass were human, had no special powers, 
and were bunking up in the bunker, um, he would probably be relegated to doing a lot of housework. Um, because Cass ultimately, you know, powerless Cass, human Cass, um, doesn't bring a ton to the table. <laughs> I mean, when you look at it from a hunter perspective, I think that, you know, the real advantage of having Cass on the team is that he's an angel. Um, in spite of his being such a fish out of water and him being so naive in so many respects, he still can be an asset on the team because he has all these powers. But if you take Cass's powers away from him, then you just have a weird dude who's slowing you down. So I think they'd make him do a lot of laundry. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I have terrible images of Cass in French made up pictures. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Terrible or beautiful? <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Hello. What is your favorite Avengers movie? I haven't seen any. What? Oh, Careful, don't say that in this crowd. It's not supernatural. You're winning me over, but they're going to slash your tires. Um, Castiel hasn't driven the Impala yet. Do you think Dean doesn't trust him? No. <laughs> Do I think Dean what? Um, Castiel hasn't driven the Impala yet. Do you think Dean doesn't trust him? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I do imagine that there will be a scene at some point where Cass drives the Impala, um, but it will probably be like, Cass got really drunk. He drank another liquor store. <laughs> and he's like, I'm gonna do a joyride! And everybody's like, no, you probably don't want a drunk driving scene with Cass. I don't know. Um, I, I do wonder if he's ever going to get his turn behind the wheel. Um, it would be fun. It'd be fun for me. You know, if the show is, um, is kind of funny in terms of transportation because these guys are always on the most epic road trip ever. It's always like, all right, let's drive across the country. We've got something, we're picking up something on the wire um, that's in South Dakota, so we've got to get there. It's going to be a two-day drive. If you're driving a 1960s classic car, you're not going to be driving two days and have it not break down. <laughs> they need they need a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic or something like that. Like a reliable car that gets good footage that they can drive these long hauls on. So it's very impractical. And then when Cass jumped into the fray, and lost his wings, and now Cass needed the way to get around. Cass got a 1970s pimp mobile, <laughs> the only other equally impractical car imaginable. And then when it took work out for him, he got this old beat up pickup truck. It's like they're not thinking about the vehicles that they're driving at all. And, uh, and I think that that's frustrating. It makes me not believe the show. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can buy that, you know, they're being attacked by werewolves or vampires or, you know, the, the Leviathan and that, you know, the gates to purgatory have been opened and then closed again. I, I buy that. I don't buy that they drive around in these old cars. <laughs> it's a very hard one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I just wonder when you got the script at the end of last season and you knew you were getting killed off. Did you really know that you were going to come back this season, or did you really think that that was it? I did not know. So you, so you really just, it was just a surprise to you as to us when, um, you, when you did come back? You know, when I first got on the show, I would read scripts uh, very nervously. Every time I got a new script, I'd be like, oh, please live on I hope they're not going to kill me. And then, I, you know, the first time that they killed me, came out of the script, and I was like, oh, I knew it. And then. Two pages later, I was alive again, and I said, oh, wait, okay. <laughs> and so I've gone through that cycle a lot of times and become emotionally dead inside. <laughs> um, but when I read that Cass was being killed at the end of season, whatever that was, 12, I, uh, I didn't know. 
And I waited, uh, I, I didn't want to be that guy that like calls down to the writers and says, hey, I'll just, uh, just out of curiosity, um, you know, I have a family. And, <laughs> and uh, so I, I just uh, waited and then um, a couple months after the script, the first draft of the script came, the script came out, um, Bob Singer said, uh, yeah, you're, you're all right. That was the only like tip he gave. He was like, you're all right. You're gonna be all right. And I was like, okay, then. I think that means I'm still alive. <laughs> Do you think, Jameson, when you let it out last season that you were actually coming back? That was Jared. Yeah, yeah. it's Jared, Jared, yeah. yeah. He's the tall one. Yeah. <laughs> so did he know before you or did? No, we knew, we all knew at that point, um, and then he fucked up. <laughs> and I'm glad he's still around. Thank, Thank you very much. That's very sweet of you to say. <laughs> Hello. Hello, so, um, I was just, um, looked across, were there any, have there been any scenes over this, over the season that got really sort of cut short and wish that hadn't been cut out or anything? Because I've seen like Kaz saying, oh, we let loose Brown, or Kaz let loose Brown. And then on the last episode, it's not too spoilery, I felt Kaz and Gabriel weren't very angry. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a performance note? That's, that's not a place, right? yeah. uh, <laughs> so, I was just wondering if there's any scenes that you felt like you just hadn't had to be cut out, because obviously a lot of story going on. Um, what, what? What do, you, what do you mean you weren't angel? Because <laughs> if most people seen it, because I... Uh, some, some, right, guys, somebody let's needed just, let's some... Let's just cut to the chase. Everybody dies. <laughs> some, somebody important needed some attention in the healing department, and some other people didn't, didn't come out and do that healing. And... Um, <laughs> Um, explanation that was... So, we, I think we rationalized it, although I don't know that we totally explained it in, in the script, that we somehow have uh, somehow diminished powers in the alternate universe. Um, but it doesn't, you know, totally, totally make sense. I'll be honest. <laughs> By the way, the Impala is pretty reliable. I've done a road trip in one. What's that? What? The Impala is pretty reliable. I've done a road trip in one. Yeah, what, what year was it? <laughs> was it a... Was it 67. Oh, really? <laughs> you got your hands on a 67? I used two doves. My, my friend had one. That's a long drive. And it didn't break down? <laughs> wow. Well, that's a coup. Um, <laughs> you, so I didn't really answer your question, though. No, you didn't. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> It doesn't necessarily have to be in that one, but have there been any scenes that have been cut oh. that you wish that you could have sort of given a bit more explanation for, or scenes that you wish could have been kept in, or that kind of thing? Well, there was one scene. There was a scene, uh, there was a diner scene in the Scooby Natural episode that was cut out. It was sort of a cast centric scene, <laughs> and that really breaks my heart because I loved every second of that show. Um, did you go, how many of you? have watched uh, Scooby-Doo. Not, not the Scooby yeah. Natural, but Scooby-Doo in general. Yeah. 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 Like, a lot. Apparently even young people have know what Scooby-Doo is. Yeah. How is that possible? Are you calling us old? <laughs> yeah. what? What's Are you calling saying? us old? What? Are you calling us, us old? old? Yes, I'm calling you old. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we repeated. Um, I couldn't hear you, my hearing aid wasn't on. <laughs> um, that episode was so, so cool to be a part of. And we had this very surreal experience of getting to watch it on a big movie screen. Um, it premiered um, at the Kodak Theater, which is the theater that they host the Oscars in. And so we were sitting, you know, in, in the same room that the Oscars happened, watching our, you know, ridiculous show um, <laughs> on the big screen, and it was really cool. It was one of those pinch me moments. Uh, I just couldn't believe it. We were all kind of radiating with glee about that. And then, um, and then we got to go up on the stage and answer questions and, and be interviewed about it. 
and that's the stage, you know, where people accept their Oscars. And this was, I think, I think we can all agree, a bigger deal than getting an Oscar. <laughs> yeah. Um, I almost answered your question. I certainly did. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, first of all, I just want to say like kudos to all you amazing fans for coming up here because my armpits are like two waterfalls and my arms are like burst right from my ribcage. So I'm kind of shaking. I get it. I, it's also like kind of a little hot in here. I'm sweating. I understand what you're talking about. And I'm surprised that people are so remarkably, consistently confident and well-composed in these lines, because yeah. there's a lot of people watching you, people are videoing you. <laughs> They're posting it on the internet right now. Like, some, somebody is live-streaming this. But ultimately, you have to think, like, probably tens of thousands of people are gonna watch what you say right now. It's not just this room, but it's people all over the world. And if there's a gap, if there's some sort of mistake that you make or say something inappropriate, that will get more viewership and then people will talk about it. It'll go viral, you know? So it's just, it's amazing to me how well composed people are in light of that fact, you know, that there are so many people all around the world judging them right now. Stop being anyway, a jerk! Thank you. Welcome. No, no question. I'm just cu curious because um, uh, we all love you, we all love Cass, uh, and you came into the, Cass came into the story a little later than the others, so I'm just kind of curious about the group dynamics, and um, have you ever feel like left out or like you're third wheeling with Jared and Jensen? <laughs> Where there's a typecast, like Supernatural had been running for three years by the time I got there. And everybody, it was a really tight crew, and Jared and Jensen were already kind of like like uh, brothers to one another. Um, and when you come in and you're new into an environment like that, it's like being the new kid at school. You're just you're you're trying to ingratiate yourself to people, you're trying to understand the hierarchies and you know who you don't want to get on the bad side of and, and um, and I, you know, I was like testing the waters. I was, I kept thinking, I kept reading the scripts, thinking I was gonna be killed. And um, and then slowly over time, um, we have all just gelled and become more and more of a unit. And that that goes for not just me, but most of the most of the actors that you see here today. Like we're all tight. We all. We're all on text threads with, all, you know, all ten of us or whatever. Um, and uh, over time, we've just gotten closer and closer. So I do, I, I am definitely a third wheel, but um, I feel like we, um, you know, that way it doesn't fall over. Two wheels will tip over, but three wheels is a tripod effect and much more stable. Um, no, I think we all like compliment each other well and um, and all uh, have developed a really strong friendship. I have a kind of weird thing that I do, which is, it's not that weird actually, everybody should do it. Uh, every year I write out my goals for the coming year and, and then I use that as sort of uh, a guide for myself as I'm trying to figure out what projects I want to do or what choices I want to make over the course of the year and it's a very effective tool um, for being productive, but also staying focused on the things that you care about. And the year, uh, the year that I booked Supernatural, I, I found this a couple of years later, because I write my goals and then I sort of forget about them. Uh, and I came back and found my goal card from that year, and I had written, I am uh, a series regular, one of my goals was I'm a series regular on a TV show, um, and I make lifelong friendships with my castmates, which is a very, I think, strange, 
thing to inject into that goal, but for some reason that's what I was feeling at that time, and I feel like that goal has 100% materialized. Yeah. So. Supernatural without you now, so. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Yes, hi. Uh, my question is you played a lot of favorite versions of Castell and the characters in the series. Which one was the most fun for you to play? Um, I, I think I liked, I liked playing Lucifer the most for some reason. Um, <laughs> But I have enjoyed all of the iterations in different ways. There's a, um, there's another one coming up. Ooh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm always nervous, like, is it going to be a complete train wreck or not? Uh, probably, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Outside of the creations you've made in Cooking Fast and Fresh with Wes, what is the strangest food item you've eaten? Um, well, there's been a lot of strange food in my house lately because um, we're, we're, Vicky and I are writing a family cookbook. Um, and it's, you know, loosely inspired by the cooking fast and, and fresh experience that we had, but also just having, you know, kids and having food be a part of our lives. Um, and so we've been doing a lot of recipe testing, a lot of experimenting, and uh, the kids are helping to create things as well as uh, being guided a little bit. Um, and some of, we made pizzas recently, and the idea was to just put a topping on it that you've never seen. We have uh, a project that we do in our kitchen sometimes, which is let's try to make something that no one has ever made before. And of course, with billions of people in the world, to make something that no one has ever made before, you're going to make something disgusting. <laughs> and uh, and we had um, we had le leftover pizza, so it was pizza base, but then we put leftovers from the fridge on top of it. And so we had uh, we had Chinese food on pizza with cut up um, uh, spring rolls and and, and and what is that? It's, um, it's the Chinese noodle. Yakisoba? I don't know, but you said something actually Chinese. Thank you. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, it was super, super disgusting. Um, but it's been, it's been a kind of lovely, I mentioned this in, in my meet and greet, but I had a very um, lovely phone call um, from my wife uh, maybe 10 days ago. She called and she said, um, I, just, I was just calling, I just wanted to thank you. And I said, oh, no, uh, thank, thank you. Because we had had this conversation earlier in the day about a topic that we've been having some difficulty with, but she was very mature and like navigated the conversation in such a way that we didn't get in a fight, which was a real triumph. And, uh, and I said, thank you, thank you for so sort of conscious in that conversation that we, it, we navigated it very peacefully and productively. And she said, oh, no, I wasn't calling about that. I thought you were a real asshole in that conversation. <laughs> I was calling to thank you for bringing food in such a lovely way into our family. And I have always cooked and I've always seen a part of uh, the family unit as, as revolving around food. Like, we always sit down and have dinner together and I usually cook it and, and, uh, and I always make, you know, a breakfast and it's often co a complicated breakfast, you know, before school. Um, and I like packing the lunch and you know, think about food and it feels like something that brings the family together. And that's partly because I was raised in that environment. My mother cooked when we were kids and food was a part of our, of our family. And Vicky had a very different experience in her childhood. Her, her family, her parents didn't cook at all. And when her mom did try to cook, her dad would throw the food because it was disgusting and it was like this weird... Uh, it was a weird, sort of traumatic experience for her, and so she has avoided the kitchen and cooking altogether for many years, and is just now starting to cook things, and she's made it to be lovely. And it was a very sweet moment, wasn't that you for breaking food? 
<laughs> it's just the good part. And for bringing food into our family in such a lovely way, I immediately cheered up on the phone because I. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This is going beautifully. Um, and then I, I, my dear friend uh, Darius, he's, he used to be a chef. And so I called him and I told him about it. And then he cried on the phone because he knows her well enough to know, yeah, double fisted. Anyway, you uh, opened a can of worms and I... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for bearing with me there. Hi, how are you? Amazing, how are you? Excellent, thank you. So, thank you very much for coming to see us in the UK. Thank you for allowing us to come into your country, in spite of all the things I've said about your thing. <laughs> Anytime, trust me. <laughs> So it's my birthday today. Happy birthday. Thank you. And so I was wondering, seeing as Castiel is like Jack's adopted dad kind of thing, how would Or Cass possibly biological father. Possibly biological father, I don't know. But how would Cass treat Jack on his birthday? What kind of special day would he plan for him? That is one of the weirder questions I've ever heard. Congratulations. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that, uh, like Jack, Cass is a bit uh, of a fish out of water, as I've said. So he doesn't, I don't think, understand the traditions that, um, that birthdays bring with them. Um, I think he'd probably mess it up in some way. Um, I think... Also, isn't Jack, like, two? How old is he? One? He's eight months, so he hasn't even had a birthday. And aging at the rate that he's aging, he might only have one birthday. <laughs> I mean, that kid is growing up fast. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I think it should be a real blowout. Um, they could go and like, I don't know, level a mountain or something like that for his birthday celebration. Um, him being a Nephilim, that's probably within the range of possibility. Yeah. What do you, I, I mean, Cass has never really, we never talked about Cass's birthday. Before, before the <laughs> all right, the calendar. All right. Um, what what are you doing? Is it is today your birthday? It is. Yeah. Wow. I'm sorry that you have to spend it like this. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be anywhere else. Um, what uh, were you excited to find out that you were squandering your birthday here? <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> um, was the there? Yeah. All right. Well. Happy birthday to you. What would you do with Jack on his birthday? I'm not sure what to talk about. It is uncanny to me the degree to which um, Alex and I look alike. Like he, if you look at a, at a photo of, of me at his age, um, which is 40 years ago, um, we look identical. It's very strange. So, um, yeah, I actually, I pried a little bit, you know, as to where his mother was nine months before <laughs> he was born. Just because I was like, oh, it'd be awkward to find out. Was he too shy to come? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. All right. And um, he wants to know how it feels when your character is dead for part of the season, and what do you do between filming the episodes? What do I do when my character is dead? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> what a weird question. That's also a weird question. Good for you. Um, yeah, I I have a lot of. Um, I have a lot of projects that I work on, so when I, when I have time off, I actually can be even busier than when I'm shooting. Um, and 
these days I'm trying to carve out a little more time to spend time with my kids during those windows um, because they're going to grow up and hate me soon, so I want to <laughs> capitalize on this small window. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I, I, I work on little weird side, creative side projects and uh, keep myself busy so that I don't, um, I don't think about my character's death too much because it makes me too sad. Yeah. Thank you. Thank your dad for me, would you? Yeah. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, it's been touched on a little already, but I'm curious as to know how much you guys know about the season's story arc before shooting begins, or whether reading a script is as exciting and surprising for you guys as watching the episodes for us. Um, yeah, you know what, I, that's an interesting question. I think it, it, it actually can be kind of exciting to, um, to, to read a script because you're, you do feel like you're getting the scoop. You're seeing it before it happens, but I think we've all probably also gotten pretty good at visualizing um, what the show looks like uh, and how the characters perform the scenes um, just by reading the scripts. Um, so we kind of like get to play the show in our heads when we read the scripts, um, and it varies. I would say the beginning of the season we get the, the biggest lead. So sometime in June we will get uh, typically six or even seven outlines going forward. So we know, you know, a third of the way through the season what that's going to look like. Um, and then as the season goes by, we, we, we might, it might, the, the lead time uh, dwindles and we might only be, you know, two or three scripts ahead of where we're shooting at a given point. So we do have, but oh, we do have lead time. And we see drafts, so we see an outline, and then we see a writer's first draft, and then we see the studio network draft, and then we see the first draft, the production draft, and then usually there's blue pages, and then there's yellow pages, and green pages, and there's a lot of iterations of a script. But basically, usually, the, the nut of the story is in that very first outline, and it doesn't change a ton, typically. How's that? That's great, thank you very much. Totally earnest, honest answer. Surprised me, too. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm really sorry. Oh. Um, I, I won't uh, taunt you like I did that other one. <laughs> so, um, if season 13 could go back to season 4 and give his, um, himself from the past some advice, what, what do you think you would tell him? Go, go back to heaven. <laughs> these guys. Uh, and don't open the, the gates of purgatory. Uh, Avoid Naomi. What's that? Avoid Naomi. Avoid Naomi. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, probably a lot of warnings. Don't say yes to Lucifer. Don't say yes to Lucifer, although yeah. I kind of enjoyed the ride a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I think. I, I think early on, uh, Cass was always, always uh, trying to do the right thing. Um, and then sometimes he made deals with the devil along the way um, because it felt expedient. And I think, probably in hindsight, uh, it, would, it would have been better in most of those cases for Cass to just stay true to doing the right thing and, and, uh, and not make deals with the devil. Um, I, I, I don't know how that will play out, but I have a feeling things might have been a little better. Um, he has sort of nearly ruined the whole world a few times. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he should have a little compunction about that, but yeah. yeah. Right, thank you. Thank you. Misha? Yeah. How was it? It was great. It's been okay. It's great. Thank you. 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 I'm glad that they ignored your attempts to lure them into a negative fray. Yeah, you stayed positive. Classy move, UK. Round of applause for Mr. Peter Yeah! Yeah!
Move yourself. We're not ready. Thank you.